Hello, and let me bring you up to speed. Today we're going to look at PowerShell on both Linux and on Windows. Now, Windows, as we know, has had PowerShell for some time, so there's nothing really special there. But in this case, we talk about version 6, which allows us to interact with also PowerShell 6 on Linux. So we have two virtual machines. One is a Windows machine. One is a, a Linux Ubuntu desktop, although it could be uh, CentOS or Linux Mint or a number of other distributions. I've gone with my favorite, which is Ubuntu. So on the right, we have Windows. On the left, we have our Ubuntu machine. And I'm able to communicate basically from one to the other and vice versa. So I'm going to start at the beginning by showing you a quick connection. Uh, so on this side, we have a connection where I'm going to run a simple get and just to be sure, my uPowerHost is my Ubuntu machine on the left here. My login user is Joker. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the password. And I get a list of processes from my virtual machine on the left. And as you can see, these are Linux processes. This is no Windows processes. Now, equally, I can do the same on the opposite side. I can say, go get me from the Windows machine. And again, I'll have to put in the password. I have a new session. Whoops. Does help if I put the password in correctly. And you see, I have an open session. So now I can do things like uh, get process. I can do an autocomplete, and there I have processes from my machine. But I could also go and do a another one, just as I've done here for the Windows. I could do an invoke command and run it against my remote machine. So there are a number of things I can do. So I can go. In this case, I'm going to just do the same with my Windows session here, but do enter. And it does help if I type the password correctly. Here we go. So as you can see, I'm now on my Windows machine. I can do a DIR. I can also do an LS. Or I could do a get child items. So basically anything of those commands, but let's do something that will actually give me a result. So process, and there we go. And you can see our Windows processes. Now, what you're probably asking the question is, how did I get to this state? Well, first of all, I installed uh, the latest version of PowerShell on both from GitHub. So that, that was the first part. Secondly, I then need to configure SSH on both. Now, on the Linux machine, this is quite simple because for most of us, you're probably familiar with um, using SSH on Linux. And for those of you who aren't, um, you're going to get familiar with it quite quickly. It's it's not a massive amount, and the documentation on GitHub does give you the, the basics. So what we're looking for is we have to enable a few things in here. One of them is we need to enable the privileged accounts uh, access with the sub-process. So in this particular example, if I scroll down, I've gone a bit too far. So with the sub-system here is the PowerShell. The PowerShell is going to fire off with this command. Now, what that basically means is the subsystem, when it calls the name PowerShell, is going to launch the command PowerShell with these parameters. Now, to give you an example of what I mean, if we look at the Windows equivalent, and for those of you who are familiar with Windows, you'll see that here is the SSH that's installed on the Windows machine, and you have same section but in this case, specifying the path. So we have again, subsystem, PowerShell, and that PowerShell fires off this command. 
Now, you'll notice the slashes are different from your usual ones, but that's perfectly normal, don't freak out. It's because the SSH is open SSH and is running on Perl. So, don't don't worry, the slashes being that way are perfectly normal and fine. So, number one, you need to configure both SSHs, once on the Linux, once on the Windows. So, we have here one of part of this. Now keep in mind I have to put in the directory here which is the alpha.16 because that's the version I've got installed. This may change if you've got a later version or an earlier version. You also have to enable all of the various uh, security types. Now I've gone with the defaults. This means the RSA authentication is yes. The public key authentication is also yes. And the, where is it? Password authentication is also yes. Now, I don't recommend this, but we are basically playing with an alpha product, so bear with me. You know, security-wise, it wouldn't be the best setup in the long term, but, and then again, we're not dealing with the final release as yet. So we have the connectivity between the two. We've established that that can be done. So how does this actually work? Well, apart from the installation of PowerShell on both machines and the installation of SSH on both machines, you do have one more part. Now for the Windows you've got the, the majority of the effort. Because apart from PowerShell and SSH you've also got to go and configure those. So this means the following. Now let me just show you what that actually means. First of all you have to download both of these from GitHub. So I installed PowerShell 6 no problem. You can see it adds an additional PowerShell shortcut and this is one of the reasons why you have to specify in the uh, SSH server the direct path to that PowerShell because you don't want to accidentally fire off 5 because 5 will not work the way you want. Uh, next you also need to be able to tell PowerShell where to find the SSH. Uh, this consequently means that you'll need to create a system variable that lets you see that as well. So if I do as an example, and I'm just going to open a command prompt here, and put in path. You'll see that we have in here our usual Windows paths, etc. And we should also see there it is, program files, SSH. So within the downloaded SSH, and you can extract it to different folders and then put the system variable as you have here. But you have also the installation.ps, so you have a full-blown PowerShell script for the installation, setting the privileges, etc. So that would be your first step. Your next step is then to generate a key. So that is then done by running the uh, key generation, the SSH key. And again, you do this from the command prompt, no problem from that point of view. And then you modify the SSH config file. Same modifications apply both to the Linux and to the Windows if you want it to work. At that point you are then done and you are able to use the communication. Now I've got one extra step. I, if I had both of these machines in my test lab normally I would have an AD server running and I would use DNS resolution. Um, I don't have DNS resolution running because frankly I bulked up both of these machines a little bit for other purposes. Uh, so consequently, I've entered the machine names manually in the host file. So your U power here and the uh, uh, Windows machine, which I can't even remember the name. It's such a funny one. Uh, let me just clear out and maybe I can see it again. There we go. This win temporary name. Um, these are entered into the host files of both machines. Normally, I wouldn't do that. Normally I would use the DNS and you would probably do the same on your network. But as you can see, it's very simple once you have that between the two. Now I can also show you what happens if you go wrong. And this is mostly on the Windows side. Um, again, if I just go and open the file location, there is a log file here. And I did screw this up earlier, I have to admit that. 
So you have your usual bits, but occasionally, just like I did here, uh, you will have some permissions and screw-ups. Now what happened here is I was struggling for a couple of minutes, scratching my head, going, what did I do wrong? It dawned on me that the PowerShell that I was putting in was not the correct path. So when you launch the 6, the first thing you're going to see up here is the correct path. Try to make sure that that looks pretty similar in your SSH config, otherwise you're going to find something similar like I did in the error log telling you that you don't have permissions or you cannot create. What it's trying to say is it couldn't launch um, the PowerShell. And the reason it couldn't launch it because it was in the wrong directory looking for something that didn't exist. So, my bad. Other than that, um, enjoy, play around, have a test. Uh, I found it quite useful so far. The other thing to note is that you have this thing called hostname. So hostname is different. Uh, for those of us who have used PowerShell a little bit already, we are normally using computer name. In this example, hostname basically seems to replace that from a Linux perspective. Whether that becomes the permanent one or if that becomes also a computer name, uh, Microsoft are not very clear at this point, um, but in all their demos it says hostname, so my guess is that hostname will replace computer name in the longer term. Uh, username is currently the syntax, so this is my happy lo Joker login over here, which if I look at this you can see I'm logged in as Joker. And then I've got my script book, which is my typical normal, I'm running a PowerShell script. I could do this in many different ways, but I figured an invoke command is simple enough. You have the, the idea. Now, since the connection between the two is over SSH, even though the authentication is in plain text, it's relatively secure. Um, but obviously this works only ideally in an internal network, and I would try to keep it that way. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this demo, and um, see you around.